Um, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome for this to the second session of uh, Public Rec Records and Human Rights. Um, I'm Paul. I work with the Guardian Project, and essentially, what we do, we make uh, uh, apps and uh, solutions for people who who are in uh, tight security situations, and also for journalists. And also, uh, we do contributions to open source projects. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, uh, so the title of today's talk is Humanitarian App Distribution, and I will have a final demo at the end. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> um, so uh, over the past years, uh, there have been lots of internet shutdowns and outages, as you can see from uh, this slide. Uh, all the countries in red have experienced some sort of inter in internet in interference, and it always leads to some uh, to lots of problems, especially since the internet is now a basic human right, and uh, curtailing access to it is a violation of that right. Uh, so uh, uh, this is from Access Now, which shows the overview of global internet shutdowns. So uh, it is documented, and you see like. Uh, with each uh, with each passing year, the number does increase, and the countries are also a lot. Considering 2024 is an is a is an election year, and uh, all all these countries have experienced some in form of shutdown or blockage or throttling, and it does get worse, especially with protests and I mean uh, human rights being violated. Um, so, what's the solution to this? So what do we do in the event of a blockage or a shutdown? So we essentially use F-Droid uh, to provide access to circumvention and uh, access tools like VPNs, Tor browser, or the Sino browser, depending on where you are. And also, we can just, uh, even to access it, we need to use F-Droid. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what is F-Droid? A lot of folks do think of it as an app store. I mean, yeah, when you do go to the website, it is there is a website where you can search for apps and download the apps that you need, and you're able to essentially just yeah access free and open source applications. Uh, so that's the website, and uh, we also have an app. An, an, an app. Uh, it's on the devices that Lindsay did provision before the dem the the talk. I mean, you could have a look. Uh, it has a green, a uh, blue icon, and uh, yeah. I don't know if you've been able to find it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, it, the turn lock. It's like a super S. Okay, thank you. Got it? After idea, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, so back to the question, what is F-Droid? So F-Droid is more than just an app or a website. It's a software application toolkit that enables users to create their own app stores and repositories and access it in whichever way you want. And it's free and open source. You could look into the code and contribute back if you're interested. And also, you're able to interact with the community in case of any challenges, in case you need any clarification. So what are the benefits of F-Droid? Uh, it's an app store that you can use without any user accounts. So there's no need for you to actually be hindered by sign-ups or sign-ins. Um, yeah, in the, in the event of... Uh, Internet blockages. You could uh, there's Tor integration, uh, which allows you to use the Tor network to access apps. And also, uh, at the moment, we just finished on IPFS integration. So if your main repository link has been uh, throttled or blocked, you're able to download the apps from IPFS. So the implementation of IPFS in FDroid was uh, pretty uh, simple, considering the app already had like uh, its own data structure. 
So essentially what we did, we just had to add the CID onto the F grade app index, whereby we, after that has been done, we do pin the apps onto IPFS, and then we do fetch the apps via any IPFS gateway. So uh, in this can be seen when you go to the settings option of the app. Uh, when you go to the settings option, scroll down, you'll see a proxy with IPFS gateways. Um, whereby you have to uh, tap on it and then say download apps from IPFS web endpoints. So uh, this only works for IPFS supported repositories. And then uh, the default gateway that we used was uh, the IPFS.io gateway. Uh, so you could just check it. However, if you have your own custom gateway, you could just add it. There has to be an, the, this ongoing work whereby you can add your own gateway to it and access content from it. So uh, yeah, this is selecting support for IPFS gateway. You can see from the slide, just toggle the button and then it gets on. And then, uh, yeah, I guess now we'll just go to the demo time whereby we'll be making the, an IPFS supported repository for F-Droid. Um, so at this point, we'll use the uh, command line tools. Sorry. Uh, we'll use the command line tools to uh, for F-Droid. Uh, we'll uh, use, uh, I'm, I'm running this on Vagrant, so I don't know if it's very visible. We'll go step by step. So if anything doesn't go <laughs> right, <laughs> we hope the demo gods are with us. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, the first step uh, when making an, say you do need your own uh, IPFS supported repository, what do you do? Uh, so on any Linux device, uh, you're able to make uh, your own f uh, repository. Since we said it's a toolkit, what you need to do is install um, f server. That's the backend that actually enables you to create repositories. So uh, if you're on Debian, you could just do like sudo apt install f server, and you're good to go. Uh, but for this case, I'll... I'll use uh, the development branch that hasn't been pushed to any Linux repository at the moment, or rather package manager. So uh, what we'll do is just, uh, sorry. So this is the command we'll use because we're using uh, from master. And then uh, just paste and get it all installed, sir. Oops. Sorry, it's a bit slow. I think the internet is not great. Oh, it works. Okay, so uh, the next step to this, what we'll do is uh, make a directory. So let's make a directory called IPFS camp fdroid demo. Uh, get into the directory, IPFS camp f demo. And then uh, uh, now we're clear. So what we do need to do is initialize an f repository. So we say f droid init. Mm. 
Um, after initializing the repository, you'll see we have a, a couple of files. We have the config file, a key store, and a repo. So uh, uh, since we want to provide uh, applications, uh, we'll move into the repository folder, and then we'll get an, an APK. So the APK I'm going to use will be like, uh, will be the Tor browser from F-Droid. So we'll go to the F-Droid website. F-Droid website. Um, head on to, let's say, Tor browser. Oh, tow. Let's look for something open. Tow. Tow services. And then uh, I'll just download this into the uh, folder. Oh, sorry. Let's just say we get, and then the link to the application. Um, so we go back and then we, uh, we update the repository. So I say F Droid, update. Oh, at this point, uh, our repository is up to date. Um, so what do we do next? Um, ac Hosting F-Droid repositories can happen on your own soft, on your own hardware, your own server, or you could use like a, a cloud, an existing cloud provider. So for this demonstration, we'll use FileBase, which allows us to pin the files onto IPFS by default, whereby we don't necessarily have to pin them locally and then access them over the internet. So. Uh, what, how do we do that? Uh, we, you need a subscription to FileBase. And uh, at this point, um, what you need to do, you have to go to the config. So I'll open the config.yaml file. And then I'll look for our clone because that's what you're using to provision the files onto the, onto IPFS. So uh, we'll have to change the bucket name, the way we will put all our content. So we'll call it uh, IPFS. Camp 2024. Um, we say our clone is true. Uh, and then what else do we need? Uh, we need a path to our clone config. Oh, sorry. Our clone. Yeah, yeah, the part. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is the path to a config, and then we'll have like an actual config to use, so say, our clone. That's correct, right? Thank you. Um, yeah, so we'll use the file base config. Uh, close it. I just have it in here, so it's just a second. Yeah. And then this is the one that we'll use the r clone file base dot com file. Our clone file base. That's the config that we'll use. Um, so. Yeah? Sorry? Yeah, I'll rotate the case. No worries. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Yeah, uh, back to our config file. That's true, 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 true. Nice. Uh, 
iClonefilebase.com. I hope it works. <laughs> um, therefore, what do we do now? We update our configuration that we just edited. So I say fdroid update.c. Oh, that's good. So if we go in, into the repo folder, we'll be able to see the index. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a new installation, so <laughs> that's why I'm installing lots of stuff. Uh, therefore, what do we do? We, see, we open the index v2.json, then we pipe into jq. So uh, you can now see our repository has an application, and this is the data structure that Froid uses. Uh, there should be a file, a full a line, yeah, IPFS CID version one, which shows the the uh, the, uh, the CID that will be actually called upon by the Froid application. Therefore, since we have our uh, uh, repository intact with everything, all we need to do is uh, push it onto Filebase right now. So we push it by running fdroid deploy. Oops, sorry. And uh, let's see how it goes. Nice. We have pushed our repository onto Filebase. Now let's open Filebase and see what's there. Let's see, let's see. Yay, so we have a bucket, IPFS Camp 2024. Um, and it's set to private, so just put it to public and then uh, we need to get the link to the actual uh, index file so that you guys can scan and have access to it, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so where do we go from here? That's my first. Uh, Camp 2024, that's the bucket name. Yes, uh, so the link to our actual FDroid is uh, repository is the link here, which we do need to update. So what do we do? Uh, we have to get this link and put it into our config file. So you have to go back and, and config YAML and say repo URL. So this is where we'll have to edit. We have to change the repo URL so that this is actually reflected onto the web page. Because I mean guys, if they're accessing it, they do need to have the correct link. And save buffer and then we update. So fdroid update. And then we deploy after I deploy. We're almost there. Be patient. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's already, the changes have already been pushed. Uh, so uh, you could try scanning the 
the QR code and see if you do have it uh, with F-Droid. Uh, just open the F-Droid app, go to settings. Uh, oh, cool, cool, sorry. Better? Yeah. Uh, go to settings and repositories, then add repository. Is, uh, has it been added? Uh, yes. yes, because that's the only app we have on our repository. Yeah, the, the repository is now live. So uh, in the event that uh, the, uh, there's a blockage on the file base URL, uh, since the app is already pinned onto IPFS, you're able to download it, and the IPFS gateways would actually recognize the CID that was initially shown into the index. So uh, essentially that's how to make your IPFS supported repository using F-Droid. Um, yeah, and that's it.